वेलकम फ्रेंड्स अगेन सो नाउ द टाइम टू स्टार्ट द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर एंड दिस इज चैप्टर नंबर एट एंड द टाइटल इज डिमांड एंड रिकवरी एंड इन दिस चैप्टर दीज मेनी सेक्शन आर कवर्ड सेक्शन ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी एट ए ट्वेंटी एट डबल ए ट्वेंटी एट ट्रिपल ए ट्वेंटी एट बी एंड ट्वेंटी एट बी ए ना एज फर एज द मटीरियल इज कंसर्ड मटीरियल ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट कवरेज इज नॉट सेक्शन वाइज आई विल कवर अप सेक्शन वाइज एंड लेटर ऑन यू कैन रेफर द मटीरियल राइट बिकॉज दीज आर डायरेक्ट प्रोविजन एंड टूवर्ड्स द एंड देर आर फ्यू केस लॉज विच वी विल डिस्कस and the learning outcomes as expected by the institute from you this says comprehend and analyze the provisions relating to recovery of duties not levied not paid short levied short paid or erroneously refunded so the duty is either not paid or it is short paid not levied or short levied or for some reason it has been wrongly refunded how that amount of duty can be demanded and then recovered so actually this chapter is about the demand not about the exactly recovery then compute the amount of interest on the delayed payment of duty then identify the situations in which the central government is empowered not to recover duty so that is the special section section 28 a this is talking about the certain situations in which though there is a duty payable it is short paid or not paid either it is short levied not levied but the amount of duty can be waived off that is remittance remission can be allowed for that then appreciate the manner in which the duties which are collected from buyer are to be deposited with the central government so there are situations when the amount of amount is collected from the buyer in the name of duty but that amount of duty is not either paid or payable to the government but here comes the obligation of the person who is collecting the any amount in the name of duty from the customer that has to be deposited with the government and if it is not then what happens that also we will talk about in this then identify the cases in which the property can be provisionally attached during the pendency of adjudication process so whenever any subject matter re relating to the demand is pending before the officer and he is of the opinion that the demand of liability of the person will be substantially high then with the view of protecting the interest of the revenue he is having a right to attach the property of the person concerned so all these provisions we are going to discuss in this chapter so section 28 28a 28 aa 28 aaa 28 b and 28 ba okay now we start with section 28 so section 28 this is about demand demand for duty or interest or both which is either short paid or not paid or it is short levied or it is not levied or this has been erroneously refunded these situations are important to remember friends this chapter is going to be relevant for gst as well right so now onwards whatever we are talking about those will be relevant for understanding gst so keep in mind that also okay so duty or interest or both this is not for the penalty so either the amount of duty is short paid or it is not paid it has not been levied or it has been short levied or this has been refunded so that amount can be demanded from the person concerned and this any of these five things or five situations may arise because of two reasons 
there can be an honest mistake and this mistake may be by the ACC who is importer or exporter or this may be something intentional on the part of ACC. Right? So when we say intentional, this is fraud or misrepresentation or separation of facts or collusion or violation of provisions with the intention to evade the duty all those things I have summarized in one word that this is something intentional. This word you will not find in the section. This particular word intentional, this does not appear in the section. But when the fraud is there, misrepresentation is there, separation of facts is there, everything comes down to one thing that is intentional. And there come another area is mistake. So either some honest mistake has been committed by the ACC who is importer or exporter or this is a mistake done by the officer. Due to some mistake there is a case of short payment, non-payment, short levy, non-levy or erroneous refund. Right. Now provisions for these you can write in continuation. This is section 28. Here we have subsection 1 subsection 2 and subsection 3 and here we have subsection 4, subsection 5, subsection 6 and subsection 7 to subsection 10 those are common in both the situations. So this is just a structure of the section 28 title automatically clear this is demand this is not recovery the question of recovery comes when the liability has been decided and the person who is liable to pay he fails to pay then comes the question of recovery but here the question of determination of the liability itself is there that's why the title is demand so demand for the duty or interest which is either short paid not paid short levied not levied or erroneously refunded and if it is because of mistake provisions of subsection 1 2 and 3 are applicable if it is a case of intention then subsection 4 5 6 are applicable and subsection 7 to 10 are common okay so now let us take first is what happens if there is a mistake so now coming to subsection 1 Now, subsection 1 says any amount of duty short paid, not paid, short levied, not levied, erroneously refunded, it can be dealt in two ways, right? It can be dealt in two ways. First is show cause notice by officer. So officer issues a notice to the person concerned that according to our calculation this is the amount of duty is payable with interest or the interest amount and now you explain us why this should not be paid. And another option is this is voluntary payment by the person or you can use the word ACC. So even before issue of show cause notice person himself decide that this is the amount payable he comes forward and makes payment with interest. Interest is something which is always payable irrespective of the fact whether demand is there or not it is there in the order or not it is there in the notice or not irrespective of that interest is always payable right and for that if you have the text you can refer subsection 10 
this is where an order determining the duty is passed by the proper officer under this section the person liable to pay the said duty shall pay the amount so determined along with interest due on such amount whether or not the amount of interest is specified separately or not so whenever there is a delay in payment interest is always there whether it is demanded or not whether it is in the order or not that is always payable so voluntary payment right this is with interest so if the person makes a voluntary payment with interest then no penalty only interest will be payable okay now when the person makes a voluntary payment he should inform the officer in writing and the this date of information that becomes the relevant date right so the date on which information is given that will become relevant date i'll explain you what is the relevant date and why it is relevant why why it is important just wait so if a person who is liable to pay he himself determine that certain amount of duty is payable then pay that with interest on his own even before the show cause notice is issued no penalty will be levied but inform the officer in writing and the date on which this information is given that becomes a relevant date right now when the information is given now the officer can check whether the liability is fully discharged or it is yet to be discharged if it is fully discharged notice further no show cause notice cannot be given and if the full liability is not discharged then show cause notice can be issued for the differential so here itself we will divide that in two part full liability not discharged and here full liability discharged right if the full liability has been discharged show cause notice cannot be issued matter has already ended the purpose of the section is already over if the full liability is not discharged then this can lead to issue of show cause notice right so even in case of voluntary payment if the full liability is not discharged then the show cause notice can be issued only for that differential amount which has not been paid and in the opinion officer that amount is payable right now we come to another situation where the person does not make a voluntary payment in this case show cause notice can be issued within 2 years since relevant date the time limit for issue of show cause notice is 2 years and the date begins from relevant date right now this relevant date is important and then we have subsection 7 that says if any stay order is there against issue of show cause notice that order is given by the court or by the tribunal then the period for which a stay order is there that will not to be taken into account for computation of this two years or rather you can say that the period for which the stay order is valid that period will be excluded for the computation of the time limit of two years so here i can add excluding 